A lot of people who watch the series, and I myself, uh, would like to be like Avon in certain circumstances because he survives. I invested certain elements in his character that I would like in mine. For example, I made him scrupulously honest. If he said he'd kill you, he would. You are rather stuck with the character. Uh, well, forever forever able, able, as it were. I mean, I am him and he is me. And my book, which I have written, is called y You're Him, aren't you? Because that's what people do. As you walk down the street or go into Marks and Spencer's or whatever, they say, oh, you're him, aren't you? And yes. Yes, I am. So I'm him for all the rest of my life and have been for the last 25 years since the show was on. I don't mind that. Well, I always played the Avon characters. He was only there because of what was in it for him. So he accepted that Blake was doing his thing and he went along for the ride as long as it suited him. He would be self-interested. So are you. Bottom line, you know, what's in it for me? Uh, and what he wanted to do was um, steal a Liberator spaceship and go off and live the life of Riley in some planet. Now, according to Jacqueline Pierce, who played Serverland, what he really wanted to do was marry her, settle down and produce little Serverlands and Avons to dominate the cosmos. But there you are. Woe betide all of us. Woe betide all of us, except them. One of these days they are going to leave you. They were almost ready to do so this time. Yes, I thought they might be. You handle them very skillfully. Do I? Yes, the, the Blake character, I think, was just too good to be true as far as Avon was concerned. Uh, um, he was astonished and said, this guy needs protecting. You know? So Blake rushed in where angels fear to tread. And there was Avon sort of just behind his shoulder with a machine gun. Uh, when you're playing the eponymous hero, um, the man in the white hat, you've obviously got to behave to a certain standard. You, you can't hit women, shoot people in the back, things like that, whereas Avon could. I think Avon sort of envied his certainty and, if you like, goodness, that he really was a decent man who was trying to do his best for the human race, whereas Avon didn't like the human race. Avon was more Coriolanus, uh, the mob. He disliked them. And the, in fact, there was one episode uh, where he criticizes um, Blake by saying, you know, you're wading through their blood to achieve what you want to achieve. And if you actually look at his uh, record, he's trying to save the human race. More people die because Blake is trying to save them than are ever killed by Avon. And I was wrong, completely, utterly, stupidly wrong. I noticed that. I almost killed you all. I don't think he was on Avon, I don't think he was unstable at all. There is a, an episode, the very last episode, where he's describing going to a planet and he says it's full of um, crooks and rebels and psychopaths. And then he smiles and everybody says, oh, he's a psychopath, but a psychopath doesn't know he's a psychopath, so uh, he would not call himself one. So he isn't a psychopath, he's just a realist. I played him as I imagined I would expect to behave given the circumstances that he was in. You would not, for example, unless you're an idiot, come up against the bad guys who have their backs to you and say cooey and get them to turn round before you shoot them. You're giving them a chance. He wouldn't give them a chance. He was a realist. In fact, he'd have killed anybody if it was necessary. Uh, he was realistic. 
And I couldn't understand when people would say, oh, he's a nasty piece of work, he's the baddie, really. And somebody actually said to me, uh, it is the first series I've ever seen where an absolute, can I use the word, uh, is the hero. He said it's never been done before, which it hadn't uh, on television anyway. Of course, when Blake Seven first came out, we thought it was very innovative and exciting and so on, but there were a number of rev reviewers uh, who thought otherwise. This is one of my favorites. This takes absurdity beyond dialogue into costume. How grown men and women perform this nonsense for adults is beyond me. <laughs> that was from the listener. When we have dealt with Star One, I will take you back to Earth, and then the Liberator is mine. Agreed. Agreed. Once the Blake character was removed from the equation, uh, he never considered himself to be a leader of any kind. He wasn't interested in anybody else. Um, in fact, I actually said to David Maloney at one particular point, I said he would never in a million years um, program the new characters, Dana and Tarrant's voices, into Zen on the Liberator. He would never do that because they would then have more control. And David said to me, well, if, if they don't do it, we haven't got a series. <laughs> so uh, one had to compromise in the character development, as it were. Terry said to me, he said, I was always fascinated by what you did with what I wrote. He said, I never anticipated that you would do what you did. And so I would write something and I would say, he, he's told me, he said, I would say, see, what's he going to do with that? And he said, you always surprised me and did something that I didn't expect. So he said, it was a great joy to write for Avon and I think it was his favorite character. I was in the unique position of being able to do what I really wanted to do. As I said earlier on, if you're the hero, uh, you've got to behave in a certain way. But when you're the guy just behind the hero's shoulder, then you can do what you like. Uh, the same applies to, for example, the Spock character in uh, Star Trek. I mean, he was a relatively minor character when he started. Can we just stop there? Yeah, that? sure, OK. Just you look so beautiful when you're angry. Uh, actresses who used to come in uh, to the series um, for an episode or whatever uh, would get quite cross with me because they'd say, oh, Paul, you kiss me in this episode. And I'd say, well, what's wrong with that? You know, and they say, but everybody that Avon kisses dies, so I won't get another episode out of it. So I was known as the kiss of death uh, to a lot of actresses. Oh, Avon. Avon. A lot of people thought he was a male chauvinist, but he wasn't. He treated women as equals and equally threatening, for example. Uh, so that if he was threatened by a woman, uh, he would treat her as he would treat a man. He'd kill her, hit her, get her by the throat, do what was necessary to stop her harming him. And he was, um, he liked women. Uh, I mean, he had quite a good relationship with Servalab, although, because he understood her, because they were, I think, perhaps. Uh, somebody suggested different sides of the same coin, maybe. Uh, and obviously the one true love of his life, uh, that uh, the Anna Grant character who is in, features in the episode Rumours of Death, um, he kills her. I, I found, I love that. I love that. He kills the only true love of his life and he kills the only friend he ever had. This guy is a tragic figure of enormous proportions, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, this is uh, my particular favourite of all the reviews, but then it would be, wouldn't it? Avon was considered an interesting character. As one viewer put it, even though he is callous and apparently without morals, he is still likeable. <laughs>